All right. You're good to go. All right, wonderful. Hello, everyone. Good evening in my time zone. So um, it's great to see you all. So to get started, what we're going to do first is just kind of do a run through of all the materials that I'll be using today and then we'll get started on creating some abstract work. So to get started, let's highlight why we're here. We'll talk a little bit about the Copic ink colors that I'm going to be using today. So I'm laying out some swatches here so that you all can see them. Um, you can see off to the side as well, we have all the inks laid out. So today I'm going to be using Copic 100, which is this black color up in the corner here. Copic E97, which is more of an orange tone. It's an earth tone. Copic Y26, which is mustard, so more of that yellow color. And then Copic BV000, which is a mauve. It's a very light purple, so the undertones are definitely some purple, blue, mixed with a little bit of red. And then we have this blue color here, which is B26 and more of a pink tone with the RV11. Then we will also be mixing in some other um, materials. So it's definitely a mixed media piece. I have some gilded gold. So um, this is just a liquid gold that you can pick up from Michaels, as well as Liquitex acrylic white. And this is a titanium white also available at Michaels. So that's going to be the ink colors that we'll be using. I will also be using um, the Copic Colorless Blender. And so this will be the substrate that we use, or excuse me, the blending solution that we use on the substrates to kind of lighten everything up. So I'll show you a little bit more about that, but those will be the colors for material, for the substrate, what we'll be painting on. We're gonna be using Yupo paper from Legion brand paper. You can also pick this up from Michael. So this is a nine by 12. Again, Yubo paper is 100% um, synthetic paper. It's made of polypropylene. And so it's a very non-porous, smooth surface. And that's important when you're working with alcohol ink because you want to be able to move the inks around. Other materials that I'll be using, um, we'll have some paintbrushes in here. I like to use silicone brushes. So they look a little bit like this. You can pick them up in the pottery section. So um, they're made with rubber ends, so they don't um, soak up the inks. And it's helpful because you can move the inks around. If you don't have access to the silicone brushes, you can also use a regular paintbrush. Um, just know that the paintbrush will end up kind of soaking up some of that ink, so you won't have as much access to it. The other thing that you'll see me use quite a bit is an air blaster or an air blower, depending on what you're looking for. Essentially, this cleans camera photo lenses, but Tim Holtz sells one at Michael's that you can also pick up. And I believe he refers to his as an air blower. So you'll see this quite a bit. Mandy, then quick question. Oh, sure. Mandy, sorry, quick question from, the, uh, from Pam in the chat. She wants to know, um, what weight is the paper that you're using? Sure, this is a medium weight Yupo paper. So um, Legion brand sells medium weight, heavy weight, and translucent. And so I'm using a medium weight. Okay, and actually another question from Mimi, uh, can we use a straw if we don't have a blower? Absolutely, you can use a straw, you can use a hair dryer, um, you can even use your own breath if you would like to do that. <laughs> so lots of options with being able to move the fluid around. Definitely, good questions. Uh, the other, uh, I guess, tool that I'll be using is a pipette, and this is to um, extract some of the gold paint from the um, bottle, as this does not have an eyedropper. So you could use an eyedropper or a pipette. I'll also be mixing um, some ink colors together and using a pipette to pick up some of that ink as well. So um, a ceramic dish is helpful to have or a pa plastic palette, a ceramic palette, anything that you can use to um, mix in, mix those colors together so that you can pick those up. I also use Q-tips quite a bit to, or ear swabs um, to pick up ink to soak things up so you might see that from time to time. And so 
You might have those kind of handy in your house. If you don't have Q-tips, a uh, paper towel works, a cloth works, um, lots of different options there as well. So that's the materials, um, or those are the materials that we'll be using today. And if there are any other questions, let me know. Otherwise, Actually, I'm gonna clean good my timing, script. Mandy. As you are putting those cards away, uh, folks are having a hard time reading the names of those colors. Can you go through them one more time with us real quick? Yeah, sure. Does this help? Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little closer to the camera here. So this is BV000. So it's kind of a mauve color. It's a light purple, kind of pink undertones, blue undertones. The next color here is mustard. So Y26. And then we have B26 for the blue. And this is the Copic 100, so it's black. And we have E97. And finally, RB11. All right. So again, for the Yupo paper, it's a nine by um, 12. And I like working in a nine by 12 because it's easy to cut down to smaller sizes. So if you're wondering like what size paper to buy, nine by 12 works pretty well. Cause again, you can cut it down to an eight by 10. You can cut it down to a five by seven. So there's lots of options that you can do when working with this size paper. So it's good to start out with if this is the first time that you're purchasing products like this. One of the things that I do want to note is um, alcohol ink can stain your skin um, because again, it's an ink. So I'm working with rubber gloves just to kind of protect my skin so that I don't have to wash up too much of it. So something to consider, not necessarily something that you have to do, it's an overall preference. Um, the other thing that I'll mention is sometimes if you're working with the inks for a long period of time can be a little headache inducing and so you might want to wear a mask. Um, that's again optional. I usually do when I'm not in a teaching setting because um, again long periods of time can get a little overwhelming with the sense and sometimes it can cause headaches. So you decide what works best for you. But we'll get started first by mixing up um, the first color that we're going to be using. And so I'm going to combine the 100, so the black. And so I'm going to put a couple of drops into this dish. And then I'm going to combine the blue with the black, so the B26, a couple of drops there. And then I'm going to take some of the blending solution, again, a couple of drops. And I'm going to take the silicone brush and I'm just going to give it a little swirl to kind of mix everything together. Now, my, by mixing these two colors together, you're going to see a darker kind of navy looking color when I apply it to the paper. And so that's one of the beautiful things that you can do with inks is you can create various colors. Um, so if you have a limited color range, or if you're just getting started, it's okay to buy some of the few basic colors and then think about how can I mix these to create other colors that would benefit um, whatever it is that you're creating. So keep that in mind that you can mix colors. And so that can be a very nice option when you're first getting started. So I'm picking up some of this blue um, in the pipette and I'm gonna come down into the bottom right hand corner and I'm just gonna kind of add some to it. It's kind of a larger, um, pool of ink. So know that the more ink that you pull up, put out on the paper, um, the more color and saturation you're going to get. I'm going to add some of the blending solution to the side. Now, if you don't have the blending solution, you can use alcohol or rubbing alcohol, so isopropyl. Um, but the blending solution from Copa is really nice because it keeps the ink really pure and thick. And so you'll see here that it's moving across the paper with this air blaster. And so Wherever I'm pushing the air, that's kind of where the ink is moving to. Now you can squeeze very hard with the bulb or lightly with the bulb. If you're using a bulb, if you're using a straw. Um, it's just how much air you're pushing out, right? Same with an air dryer. If you have a low setting, high setting, that'll impact how it is moving across the paper. Next, I'm going to pick up some of the gold 
with the pipette. And I'm going to add it next to this navy color that we've put on the page. And so it's just right next to it. Um, from there, I'm also going to add some of the white acrylic ink. And again, just right next to it. What's going to happen is these are going to melt together. And I'm actually going to take the silicone brush to do that. And I'm just going to lightly kind of combine the two together. Then I'm going to take some of the blending solution and I'm just going to add it right into the gold, mix it in with the ink. When you do that, it's going to activate the ink. It's also going to activate some of the gold. It's going to activate some of the acrylic. Now, because these are different mediums, they're going to have different textures, different reactions by adding in some of that blending solution. And they're just mixing together. And then I'm going to take the air blaster and I'm just going to push it around. And as you do that, it's going to start to spread across the page. And so you can decide how thick you want to keep the gold. If you want to add more of the acrylic to move it around, you can. Um, or you can add additional ink to the page. So next here, I'm grabbing the mustard color. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that up here. And just know as you're creating um, paintings with ink, it's going to look very different probably from mine. Ink kind of has its own mind, and so be open to that. When you combine yellow with blue, you're going to see that these two colors mixing together is going to create a, a bit of green. I've added more blending solution to the outside of that yellow that we just added to the page. And again, just gliding and pushing around with the air blaster. And there's a little bit of green that's coming through in here because when you mix yellow with blue, there's that green. Add a little bit more blending solution on top. And then I'm going to take the silicone brush and I'm just going to mix the two together. So I'd like to see a little bit more green there. So it's definitely more of an olive green in here because of that black that's mixed in with that navy. And so you'll see that happening there. A little bit more of the gold on the side there. I'm going to bring in some of the orange. When you're thinking about colors, orange and yellows, those are going to mix well together. Um, think of the color wheel and what happens when you mix colors as you're mixing these colors together too. So I'm just adding in some of that orange. I'm also going to add some more of the metallic in here, so the gold. And then I'm also going to add some more of the acrylic white. Using the air blaster to move things around. All right. I'm going to mix up some more of the navy. So a few drops of the blending solution, the blue, and the black again. Mix them together. And pick up some of the pipette. You can also use brushes to scoop up some of the navy. Some of that can, just whatever you have. You can also just dump it right onto the page. That would work as well. So it depends on what you have for your supplies and tools that you're using. To that navy, I'm going to add some pink around the outside. So that's that RV11. And I'm going to add some more blending solution. Now with the blues and the darker colors, you'll find that it will stain the paper a little bit more than the lighter colors. So keep that in mind. Um, staining is part of the process. Don't be afraid of it. Um, embrace it and use it as part of what you're creating. With an abstract art, it's just about how, 
how it's moving, how you feel about it, and just have some freedom to let loose and enjoy the process. Because you can always add more color, you can add more layers, more dimension, it all can just build upon one another. I'm adding more of the white acrylic ink towards the top here by the blue. And as you kind of, again, mix those together, some of that blue is going to mix in with the white. I'm going to add some more of the gold as well. And some more blending solution. Again, just pushing some of that outwards, mixing those two together. Once this all dries, you'll see a lot of different textures happening because you're using some of the acrylic ink mixed in with some of this gold. So lots of layers and texture once it dries. Hey Mandy, once you reach a stopping point or at least a good like point to pause, could you uh, refocus your phone real quick? Let's see. Thank you very much. Is that any better? Mm, somewhat. Uh, it might be better to actually reach in and pinch to kind of make sure that the image is clear. It's a little better. It's kind of like focusing in and out now. Better, better. What's that? Folks? A Seems to be a little better. Go ahead and continue with the class. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. So by adding in some of that pink to the blue, there's definitely some more purples in there, right? So you're mixing those colors and that's starting to show itself in the side here. And so you'll see that it's a little bit harder to see on the camera. Hopefully you can see that now. All right, so. I'm going to jump back in and add in some more of this yellow and I'm going to do kind of some big looping shapes. So again, with ink, you can do small blobs, you can do large um, little loops like I just did, large lines. Um, just be kind of open to that. The more ink again that you put on that paper, the more that's going to be available for you to kind of push around. So just doing those two little loops ended up creating a lot more ink available. To, to play through that. All right, next I'm going to go back to that navy color. I'm just going to re-wet what's already in the small little ceramic dish because there's still some ink there. And so to re-wet it, all I did was add some of that colorless blending solution. Add some of that navy up in the corner there. And I'm also going to add some more yeah. blending solution up here as well. Again, mixing that blue with the yellow, there's probably going to be some green that'll be happening here shortly. Gonna bring in some of the purple now. You would not need to necessarily have the purple. So if you're thinking about purchasing these colors, the pink will definitely create some of that purple coloring, but the purple is kind of nice to have if you just want to bring in that purple tone. seeing some comments about the focus again. Let me Does that make it any better.
Mandy, we got a pretty good question right here. Uh, about how much of the blending solution do you think you can use for a piece of that size? Uh, this person's trying to anticipate how much they should have to buy for their next project. Sure. So um, the smaller bottle that I'm working with, I would say about half the bottle would do about a nine by 12 um, or maybe less than that. Um, yeah, I would say less than that. You could probably get three paintings out of some of the smaller ones. Um, and so if you do kind of just the blending solution, um, that would help if you want to do like they have the larger bottles. I forget what size the larger one is. I think it's 200 milliliters. Does that sound right? Nate? Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a larger bottle that you can buy as well. And so that might be helpful if you're thinking about doing some larger pieces mm -hmm. um, or multiples of the same. So next I'm going to bring in some more of the orange here. And I'm going to bring in a lot of the gold as well. So one of the things that you can use with the gold and the white is it can act as a, a fairly decent barrier. So if you don't wanna mix some of the colors um, or if you wanna try and keep them a little bit separated, you can use it as a barrier. bringing in some of the blending solution, blending it all together here. Oh, and I see the question about what was used for the barrier, just that gold and the white. So I used some of the, the gold first next to the orange and then some white. And that can act as a bit of a barrier between the inks. Because um, of course, when you start to mix those inks together, they're going to react together. And so there's a bit of a barrier there to kind of separate the orange from the gold or the mustard color. Bringing in some of the pink in here. And some more of that blending solution. And I'm just pushing into the blue first to start to push some of that ink into it to reactivate it. And then coming back through. some more pink in there. So again, layering is completely fine to do when you come back to the piece, adding some more blending solution as well to blend those together. The nice feature about a blending solution versus using rubbing alcohol, so I, I mentioned you can definitely use rubbing alcohol. Blending solution blends those inks together where using like rubbing alcohol or isopropyl, it um, actually dilutes it. So that's a, a bit of a difference there and some of the purple specifically here. More of that blending solution. I'm also going to bring in some of the acrylic white here on the edge. And some more of the gold in here as well. And some more of the purple on the side. Got a question from Kate Britton. Do you find the gold acrylic easier to work with than something like pinata brass, for example? So um, both are great. Uh, Michael's specifically has the gilded gold. And so working with that just to kind of show some different textures, um, the uh, pinata brass is going to mix in a little differently and it's not going to have as much layering or texture. So it's a little hard to show, but at the end here, I'll 
kind of unclip my phone and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit more so that you can see what that texture looks like, which is very different from using like a pinata brass, but you certainly could use pinata brass, definitely. So more towards the bottom here, I'm gonna add in a little more pink around the edges. And a little more of a blending solution here. Mixing in some more of the blending solution into that dish because there is still some ink there. Um, the when your inks kind of dry, you can still rewet them when they're in ceramic dishes or plastic dishes, any of those things you can kind of like so kind of reactivate them to pick them up. So Mandy, Jessica is actually coming across an, an issue. Uh, the white acrylic and alcohol ink are separating. Uh, any tips for using the two together? So you will see some separation with the textures. What I would say to do is just be careful about how much air or force you're using when you're mixing the two together. Um, so I was lightly using the air up here to kind of prevent some of that, um, I guess the best way to say would be like, kind of like it coagulates, right? So you get kind of like that buildup. So if you lightly push things around, that'll help with that. Um, also, if you let the ink dry a little bit before you add um, a little of the, uh, of the acrylic ink, that'll help too. So a couple of different things to try and do. Um, the best advice that I can give you is just to practice and try and see what works for you. Um, climates can have an impact on inks, like humidity, that can cause some different things with condensation. So. Um, right now I'm in Minnesota, so it's cooler. We have very little humidity. So in terms of, I see the question about drying time. Drying time is really quick with inks. It's a lot slower with the acrylic ink. So right now the white acrylic ink, and I'll just move it here so you can see, it's still wet on the paper and I'm moving it around. Whereas I'll grab another brush. This ink here, this is dry and not moving already. So um, there's a little bit of difference in the dry time. And so like that ink that I just poured up in the top corner, that's already dry, which is okay. I'm going to reactivate it with um, some blending solution and start to move that around the page um, right now as we speak so that we can keep that kind of lighten it up and keep it moving. And so by adding that blending solution definitely creates more of a softer fade. It keeps the dark closer to the outer edge, which is what I was going for. I'm going to add just a little bit more in the top there. And then I'm also going to bring in some more of the gold in here. I'm going to pick some more up too while we're at it. So I kind of keep everything within close range too when I'm working. So when you first get started, just make sure you kind of have all of your materials right around you because that will definitely make things easier for you. So you're not going in search of things while you're waiting for it to dry or while it's dry, you don't want it to dry too fast. So I'm adding some more of that white. Some more of the acrylic. Just mixing it in there. The gold is going to mix really well with the acrylic. They're kind of similar in texture and dry time. Again, I'm just lightly using that air blaster. So if you're using a straw, keep it light. Hair dryer might be kind of tough with some of this um, gilded gold. So again, just play around with it. See what types of texture, what style you like. 
um, what resonates with you. I'm gonna add in some more yellow because I feel like this needs just a little pop of yellow here. And I'm gonna add some more blending solution as well. Just kind of move that out, move it around. And so now back to kind of that question about coagulation, right? So I just added ink to more of the white and I'm just lightly blowing it around again it will kind of clump up on you if you're too aggressive with the air I'm going to soften the edges up around here so to soften the edges what I mean by that is just adding in some lending solution and that's going to kind of lightly soften those spots. It's going to kind of move the ink to wherever you're pushing it. So very lightly squeezing. And that lightens up everything there. And because there's a little bit of pink on the one side, I'm going to add a little bit more pink in here. Create a little bit of balance. And I'm going to add a little more blending solution as well. And bring in a little purple. One of the things that you can use with a silicone brush as well is you can use it as like a paintbrush. And so you can move some of those inks around to kind of position them into places that you want them to be. So similar to working with any other paint medium, you can kind of manipulate it a bit while it's wet, of course. So that's where those silicone brushes are kind of helpful. I'm going to add a little bit more blending solution here. Okay. So sometimes questions that I get asked about abstract paintings are like, when is the piece done? Or um, how do you decide your composition, where you're putting the inks? Um, I like white space, so you'll see kind of like that white space throughout. I also think about how your eye will move across the paper. And so, you know, in this direction for me, I feel like you know, your eye will definitely move with the gold in this situation. It might come back around and do more of like a circle effect because there is this kind of slight circle in the middle. Um, sometimes I have to come back to a painting. Sometimes it might feel done right now, but then I'll look at it some more and say, oh, no, maybe I want to add something else to the page or, um, you know, balance it out a little bit more. So keep that in mind that that can sometimes happen. Um, mostly, I think it's a feeling knowing when your painting is done. Um, when you do finish your painting, something to consider with alcohol ink paintings is sealing your painting. So if you want to give this as a gift or if you want to hang it up on your wall, you may want to seal the painting because alcohol ink will fade a bit faster than other types of um, paints. So it'll fade a little faster than acrylic or oil paint. And so what I tend to do is I tend to seal my paintings with Kmart varnish and a UV protectant. And so I just want to cover that with you guys and I'm going to show um, the bottles that I use. So I use a Kmart varnish from Krylon and I do two to three coats of this first um, because this will prevent any other sealants from activating the inks. So some sealants will reactivate inks. So you need to be very careful um, of the ingredients that are in your um, your varnishes, if you will. So this Kmart varnish works well. I use two to three coats of this first. 
And then I follow those two to three coats with two to three coats of a UV spray. And this is the one that I prefer. It's a gloss, so it has a bit of a shine to it. It's archival, so um, it does a good job of sealing everything up so that when you have it hanging, if it comes in contact with light, it won't fade the, the print as fast. Um, this isn't necessarily something you have to do. This is just something that I prefer to do to protect um, the paintings. So for right now, I would kind of consider this piece to be relatively finished for the most part, um, at least from kind of where I'm looking at it right now. Again, I probably look at it a few different ways, adjust, change the frame. What I do want to show you all, and I apologize, this is going to get a bit shaky. So Nate, I don't know if you want to change the views to just me while I take down my phone, but I'm going to take down my phone here just so that I can show you all more of the close-up of that texture. So I don't know what would be. So some of this is still wet, of course. So keep that in mind when you're moving your piece, but you can kind of see that nice shine of the gold, but also that it's raised because I mixed that gold in with that acrylic. So it kind of almost creates like a bubbling up effect, um, but it looks really cool once it's dried. You can see there's all this nice shimmer and shine from that gilded gold, and it's just, it's on there really thick. So like I mentioned, be careful, it's wet, right? So up here, the white's already mixing in, so I'm just gonna kind of move some of that around. So keep in mind as you're using these products that it'll take a bit of drying time, so you'll have to let it just kind of sit hang out for a bit. And so that would kind of be if you mounted it from, you know, this angle, I could turn it and, you know, put it in a frame this way, um, which honestly, because it's a bit heavier on the other side, I would probably frame it or even mount it to a wood board paneling this way. And that's just because I enjoy the movement from this direction. Any other questions that maybe I've missed so far that people are wondering about? Actually, now that we've got some time, Catherine had a good question. Can you use canvas boards rather than paper? Um, also, Amy wants to ask about what adheres to the wood paneling. There's, there's more material questions now. Material questions, perfect, yes. So, so many options are available when working with ink. So be open to the options. You, when you're first starting out, tile is super fun to practice on blending colors. So you can easily, I think I might even have a tile piece close by. I do. So you can easily just practice some different colors on tile. And the nice thing about tile is tile wipes away um, super easily. So um, you can do that. Canvas is definitely an option. Um, so any type of canvas board, um, uh, what are some of those like gesso board, um, there's clay board, all of those things, those are fine to use. If you're gonna use canvas, I would really suggest priming your canvas before you put the inks on the canvas. Um, if you want more of a non-porous surface so that it glides a little better. So you can use like an interior exterior primer and that'll like kind of create like a layer or you can use gesso. Um, so lots of options there. You can also just leave the canvas completely blank. Just know that when you leave the canvas natural or raw, it'll seep into it. So it won't have as much fluid movement. What other questions were there about, oh, and then was there something about mounting? The question before, sorry, I got to scroll up and find it. Uh, yeah. Anyone <laughs> wants to know what adheres it to the wood paneling? Oh, to the wood paneling. So um, to basically take a piece of UFO and adhere it to a, like a wood paneling, like a birch board or something along those lines, um, I use golden, um, mm -hmm. 
I apologize. I can't remember this off the top of my head, but I do have a close by. Um, I use a golden soft gel gloss and I know Michael sells this. So um, you can definitely pick this up. And this is what I use to um, adhere it to the board. Um, so you just put like a, a relatively heavy coat on, um, on the board and then adhere the board to the full paper and then let it dry with weights overnight. All right. That's also related to Katya's question about mounting. Sandy wanted to know, have you tried any other acrylic ink colors other than white with the alcohol inks? Yes. Lots of different options are available. Liquitex has some really um, fantastic options. So black works really well and can be fun. Navy as well. Um, they also have some really cool, I wish I could, I don't know if you can kind of see this, but this is like a metallic -y copper they have a metallic gold. Um, they actually call it iridescent. So when you're looking at them, um, some options there. All right. Anybody else? Actually, Jessica wants to know, how do you get that wispy look? Maybe I'm not using enough blending solution. Sure, yes. Yeah. So the wispy look, so kind of like in here, I'm assuming is what you are kind of referring to. That is a bit softer. It's definitely adding some uh, additional blending solution. So adding enough so that you can get it to move outward on the paper. Let me, let me move this aside and we'll just do, we'll do a quick little tutorial real quick. So more of that wispy look. This is just that mustard color and I'm making a little bit of an arch with it. And then I'm coming in with the blending solution and I'm just directing it right towards the arch, but it's right next to the yellow. And it kind of pushes in like with just kind of on its own. But when you take the air blaster or if you're using a straw, whatever the case might be, and push it in the opposite direction that you added the ink, that's going to create more of that wispy kind of look or effect. Awesome, thank you. Um, let's see, Joni wants to know, what about fabric? Fabric is going to react a little bit like canvas. Um, and so when you're adding all the inks and everything, it'll kind of dye it like, almost like a fabric dye um, because it won't be able to kind of move across the fabric. And what about spritzing it with alcohol? So, um, from a chemical standpoint, you have to be very careful of spritzing alcohol. Um, it becomes an aerosol when you're spritzing it out of a bottle and that becomes hazardous. Uh, so I wouldn't suggest doing that, um, but they do make inks in bottles that you can spray out and that's just a different, um, it's because it's an ink and it's not like actual like isopropyl or blending solution. So you just have to be really careful with spray bottles and breathing that all in in the chemical reaction. I did read up on that. So my advice would not be to not do that. All right, anybody else? Any other questions? We've still got a little bit of time. Uh, Guadalupe wants to know the difference between Copic ink and India ink. So Copic is an alcohol-based ink um, Shannon, you think you can pop in and help us out with this one? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, India ink is going to be more, uh, I guess, thicker, I guess is the best way to put it. It's not necessarily the chemical. That's a huge difference. Um, but India ink will have more of a stain. Now, when you watch Mandy's demo, she did have the gloves on, you know, to protect her hands because you will get a, somewhat of a stain if it's on your fingers for a while, especially that dark, uh, 100 and B23 blend. But um, India ink is going to be a more powerful, more pungent, a little bit thicker. So I guess the best comparison would be there's watercolor, there's gouache, and there's acrylic paint, right? Um, acrylic is going to be a thicker, more opaque, and gouache is somewhere in between the two. And the best thing I can put it is um, alcohol ink is somewhere in between, and India is going to have a thicker opacity, I guess, is the best way to put it. And it will stain your clothes a lot worse. <laughs> it's from yeah. my experience. Yeah. Oh, and I did, Mandy, I did share your Instagram um, link 
but I know people have been asking in the chat where they can find more of your work if you have any work nearby. I don't know if you do, but I do know that I really loved your Christmas ornaments that you just made. So I shared the link to your Instagram and if you have um, stuff to share, uh, just sure. if you have that sheet, I think. Yeah, let me see, here we go. Um, and so I do have everyone's, con all the contact information for both myself and for Copic. So if you wanna connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, my website, um, I do have a blog on my website, so you can sign up for that. Looking to add YouTube in the, in the year here. So um, lots of different options there to connect. Um, I do have a Facebook group. So if you hit up my Instagram and you go to my links in my profile, you can join the Abstract Alcohol Inc. Facebook group. It's all Abstract Alcohol Inc. People post things, answer questions. Um, so it's a great way to connect. So feel free to do that. Um, yeah. Um, Mandy, I do have one more quick question, actually, and I'm kind of curious about this, too. When I look at your art, you use a lot of soft pastels, and that just could be your preference. But um, is there any way for someone just getting started, would you recommend, like, primary colors because you can make other colors within those three? Or do you recommend just kind of going with what your style is? Or do you have any suggestions? Oh, great question. So um, really, I would go with colors that you gravitate towards first. So maybe grab like three colors that are definitely your, your favorite, like something that you just really enjoy. For me, I'm just gonna grab them because they're in my favorite spots. Like I started out with a really like light blue color. So this is B91, um, it's kind of a pale grayish blue. And I grabbed yeah, E95 is something that I think I've, this is like probably my third bottle of this. It's a like a tea orange and then um, salmon pink. So those are just some of my favorites. So I definitely, like you said, gravitate towards pastels. Just know that the lighter the color, um, the more washed out it's going to get when you add any type of blending solution to it. So um, some of those darker colors on, on Copic's um, website, actually will fade out into very soft or light colors. Um, it's okay, I'll grab like another painting and I can kind of talk about how sometimes those lighter colors are not quite what you expect them to be. So like with this kind of darker turquoise, it's just lighter here because I added more blending solution to it. And so this is bronze. Um, BG bronze? Yeah, BG78. So um, that's going to give kind of more of that softer look. So even though it looks pastel -y, it's only because I've added more blending solution to the mix, but it starts out super dark around the edges. Yeah, that's really nice. And I like how you're holding it up close to the camera so we can see it really well. This is great. And no, nine by 10 is not always my um, size right now. What I'm showing you is actually, um, I'll zoom out a little bit if I can here. It's actually an 11 by 14. So this is a little bit larger than what we were working on today. But I will say nine by 12 is usually my go-to, but I do kind of venture into this 11 by 14. Um, and I've done bigger from there too, so. Other questions? Straighten that out. Let me scroll back and see if there's any that we missed. Um, I think I did see a question about the markers. Does that sound familiar? Like sound right? Let's see. I know that uh, Kate wanted to know for those of us wanting to purchase a few inks to start, what are your favorites? Are some inks easier to work with than others? Um, oh, my favorite colors. That is a really tough one. I can tell you, like I said, I mentioned those like colors that I started out with. I also love like the, the blue violet line when you get into like BB29, BB25. Those are some of my favorites. And I, I love earth tones. I have a ton of the earth tones. So like E71 and E70 were probably some of the first two that I started with in the earth tones. Um, Black 100 probably my most used color of all because it adds like depth and dimension and you can add that black 100 to just about any color 
and it'll create some really cool tonal effects. And then I also like um, some of like the yellow reds in the very light side of it. So like the double zeros, triple zeros, that gives you a color that you can add to any other color to help kind of lighten the tone. So remember yellows and whites help to lighten colors, blacks and grays and browns help to darken them to add contrast. Um, I did want to kind of just talk real quick about markers. So if you happen to have a lot of Copic markers, but you don't really have the refills yet, you can use the markers. So you can add, you know, just some of the marker onto the page and then add some of the blending solution and it will work. Um, you just end up having to use a lot more blending solution than if you had the marker or if, than if you had the refill instead of the marker, but you can do it. So you can kind of see that I'm lightening it up. Um, and that was just with the marker. Sorry, it was the only color I had close by. This is E70, so it's a really light color. Probably not the best to show you guys how markers work, but you can use the Copic markers. And actually one more time, Mandy, can we see the final piece before we close up today? Yeah. yeah. So here is that final piece. Can you hold it up? Oh. Really You can kind of see, this is still drying. So some of this is moving around on the paper because I've been lifting it and moving it. So like I mentioned, just be really careful when you start to use some of those acrylic paints um, or the gold like I've used here. There you go. And some nice reflection. In the light, this would look so beautiful, but unfortunately, no sunlight here today. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, this looks really nice. If um, yeah, if anyone else has any other questions or whatnot, just uh, reach out to us, and we might have another one of these in the future. Yep, just stay tuned. Keep an eye out on michaelscom classes and if you can check any one of those links up there, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, uh, we have a ton of channels all over the place. We are on all your favorite social media platforms. And Mandy is on three of your favorite social media platforms and has her own website. Be sure to check those out. Uh, Carolyn, to access the recording, they usually put it up, what, like one or two days after? Mm -hmm. So just keep checking uh, Michael's YouTube and you'll see it there. Yes, there should be on their website. Um, when you go on to michaels.com slash classes, they should have categories. Um, usually in Copic, we are under the fine art category. So if you click on fine art, then you'll see um, the most recent videos and this should pop up again within a couple of days. And the list of her supplies will be in the description of that YouTube recording. So in case you missed the list of supplies, what she used today, you can find that there too. I think that's it for me. <laughs> that's everything. Yeah, thank you so much, Mandy, for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me and it was great to see you all. I can see some of you up on my computer screen. And honestly, if you guys have questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to answer questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming.